Hi everybody, on my last night dive video, I gave tips on photography during night dives. Now in this video, I'm going to give important tips on creative strobe positioning for night dives. Let's check it out. Okay, let's just review the summary of photography tips on night dives, which was the last video. For equipment, for lights, you need a strobe to expose and illuminate your subject. Focus light to focus on the subject and a dive light to navigate. I also carry a backup light in my BC. Carefully review all the camera settings before entering the water. Go slow so you can find things and approach them. On your LCD settings, make sure you set it so you can review your actual histogram, not just the LCD image. Get close. At night, your strobes illuminate everything. There's no available light. So anything that's shown has to be within four to six feet of you. And take advantage of the beautiful black background at night to let the subject pop out. Now let's talk about strobe positioning on night dives. Now you can aim your strobe right at the subject from in front to show detail. That's what I like to do. Okay, I also I use that strobe positioning for this beautiful octopus, okay? Now you can put your strobe at an acute angle and shine it in from the side to show texture and topography, which is what I do did to show the beautiful texture on the skin on this um, trunk fish, okay? In the last video, I showed that if there's a lot of particulate matter in the water, well, you can eliminate, a, you can use a distracting or busy background, okay, non-open water like here, to hide the backscatter, but then you don't have the beautiful black background. Or you can get really close to fill the frame with your subject to where your subject hides the backscatter. Plus, there's less backscatter to illuminate with a smaller water column. But now you're closer and your composition has changed. So let me talk about creative strobe positioning. Now, if I want a black water background, like on this crab here, but there's a lot of backscatter, remember, if I use the beam from the guide light on my strobe, this beam is very, fairly narrow and I have to point it in the same direction as my strobe to focus on it. If I use my strobe as my focus light, I would have to direct my strobe right at the subject to focus on the subject. But then I'm illuminating the water column in between my lens and the subject, which you can see by all those blue arrows pointing down. And this could result in a lot of backscatter. This is a situation with a lot of particulate matter, okay? But if I separate my focus light, if I have a separate focus light, not the guide light on my strobe, now I can direct my strobe out, straight out, such that only the lower edge of the cone of light illuminates the subject. Now I am not illuminating the water column in between my camera and subject, and I should get much less backscatter. But if I use my strobe as the guide light, I could not use this position because the guide light would, be, would not illuminate the subject because the guide light would be pointing straight out. Okay, here's the image I got with the strobe positioning. Believe it or not, there was a ton of particulate matter in the water. But, with, um, it's, but there was very little backscatter visible because I used just the inferior edge of the cone of light to illuminate it. That's how I position the strobe. What little tiny backscatter there was, I could easily remove in Photoshop in less than 30 seconds. Now the same idea applies if you have two strobes. And this is either macro or close focus wide angle, all right? Here I'm using my guide light from my strobe as a focus light, which I don't recommend because I have to point both my strobes directly at the subject. And once again, I'm illuminating the water column between my camera and subject, and in a backscatter situation, this picture is going to be really hard, really a lot of backscatter. Whereas if I have a separate focus light, which you see here, the green coming from the focus light pointing at the subject, now I can point my strobes out such that the edge of the cone of light illuminates or catches my subject, but I don't illuminate the intervening water column. Okay, now there's another common problem with Good subject, but bad, bad background. I have the crab and I have a bunch of ugly things behind it. If I have my typical strobe positioning, yes, I'm going to get the crab, all right, but I'm also going to illuminate that ugly distracting background, okay? Whereas if I have a separate focus light illuminating my subject, okay, here you see the green focus light going right at the crab. Now I can point my strobe up and point it back at my camera such that only the edge of the beam of light catches the subject, but it doesn't illuminate the ugly distracting background. That's just what I did to get these cool looking shrimp. All right, 
I did not illuminate the ugly background, and I really actually like this shot. Now, I must admit this takes a little trial and error. I have to check my image on my LCD screen to make sure I did catch the subject and did not catch the background. Sometimes you have to adjust your strobe position slightly a few times with this technique. But if you have a cooperative subject, it, it works pretty well. Sometimes I back away slightly too when adjusting the strobe position so I don't frighten the subject. So, to, to summarize, creative strobe positioning on night dives. You need to have separate focus light. Don't use the guide light on your strobe, okay? Position the strobe straight ahead of your subject if you want to emphasize detail, and you can position it at an acute angle to show texture and topography and shadow. If there's a lot of particulate matter in the water, like a backscatter situation, you can aim the strobe straight out and use the lower edge of the cone of light to illuminate the subject but not the intervening water column, and you won't get all that particulate matter. If there's a bad background, well then I sometimes point my strobe back at my camera and just use the outer edge of the cone of light to illuminate the subject, but not the back, bad background behind it. Well, there you have it. I hope you found this helpful, and I always welcome any feedback that you give me, and thank you very much for your attention.